caravan of garbage time. You better believe it is. The Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Yes. The first one. We're going to be doing all three every Tuesday. And look, if any time during this video people feel like leaving a like, hey, why don't you leave a like? Why don't you? Can't do it. Leave a like. Do you remember the huge buzz leading up to Spider-Man 2002? Yes. It was electric. Mm -hmm. The air was electric. It was an electric buzz. Because James Cameron was going to do it for mm. years, and he was going to do it with DiCaprio, and that didn't happen. And it didn't DiCaprio. They had to pull a bunch of the marketing because the trailer had the Twin Towers in it. I remember that, yeah. I mean, that was a good trailer. When the yeah. Thing was caught in the web. Were you hyped for this as a comic book boy? Extremely hyped for this. Yeah, right. I mean, what did we had before this? Blade. That was a good one. Spawn. Not a good one. In retrospect, loved it at the time. I know why. Man. Pretty good one. Battlefield Earth? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good one. Yeah, pretty solid one. Yeah. I do what I can. Uh, it made 100 million in its, uh, its first weekend, opening weekend. Was that a record? Never a broken record, before. yeah. Yeah, it was only It's not a broken record. No. I mean, people banging on about how exciting it was were a bloody broken record. I tell you Let that me much. tell you. It pioneered a bunch of stuff. The Marvel flipping pages. Oh, yeah, okay, I mean, sure. most comic book franchises have dropped that. I feel comic books pioneered that. <laughs> sure. But you mean in a different on medium. On screen. Oh. I know you have opinions on the lead casting of Tobey Maguire. Yeah. It wasn't initially going to be him. I went through, like, a few people. Uh, DiCaprio I mentioned, James Franco, mm -hmm. Wes Bentley, who you remember as the boy who was in love with the plastic bag. The weird one. No, I remember, his, I remember him as the bad guy from Ghost Rider. That's how oh, I remember him. Well, I remember he's the bad guy from The Hunger Games with the weird beard. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. uh, Frank... I remember him as somebody people constantly reference as looking like me. <laughs> hey, you look like that weird beard guy. <laughs> Frankie Muniz, who was actually a child. At the That's side, true, which yeah. Makes sense. But you know what? It came to Tobey Maguire, and it's absolutely worth it for the opening sequence of what is clearly a man in his late 20s <laughs> chasing a school bus for some reason. <laughs> you know? Yeah, to get his son. Yeah. Upon re-watching this movie, this movie is one of the purest translations of comic book to movie, I think. I mean, there's some elements, like the web shooter. Well, see, changed, it, sure. well I, th I think so, but I think, like, in terms of colourful, stylized, and it's kind of simple, kind of action-packed, I think Sam Raimi, the director, has clearly gone, okay, in this scene, how can we make this look exactly like the page yeah. from a comic book? And the I think posing, it works. The swinging. Yeah, and, and I think yeah. in, a, in a lot of cases, especially visually, it works really well, yeah. but I think maybe some other stuff, not so much, which yeah, I'm sure right. we'll talk about. Some stuff needs to to stay on a comic book page. I completely I think. agree. Like the Green Goblin. You want to give him a weird oh, for sure, motorcycle yeah. helmet. Mm -hmm. I had two other names here. Scott Speedman. Oh, yeah. Who we know from Underworld. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, Freddie Prinze Jr. And Sam Raimi joked at the time he won't even be allowed to buy a ticket to see this film. Brutal. I, I wonder know. if he ever did. He probably we did. We should tweet him and find no, out. Sam Raimi made sure. Oh, my goodness. He put goodness. his picture up. Yep. Do not sell <laughs> tickets to this man. <laughs> he probably got the lead from She's All That to buy him a ticket. No, that's they went probably in together. true. Yeah, yeah. they probably did. She went on his shoulders and they walked in. Exactly. We're the world's tallest woman. One ticket, please. What I don't miss are these super long credit scenes. No, they're good riddance to them, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. X-Men probably held on to them for a while. Yeah, too long. I mean, this one, you know, it sets a tone because it's webs and it's DNA and it's buildings and it, but it's yeah. it's too long. I mean, and again, a, a product of its time and these days, if, if a movie started like this, I think we'd be like... Get to the action. Yeah, we don't Get to it. the man running yeah. after his, <laughs> after the school bus. You can appreciate the score. I think we'll talk about it next week, but the second one does it better because its credits are a recap of the first film. Yes. Okay, so what do you think about Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man? He's too old. He is too old. I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with his performance. And I think uh... if, I think if you started it... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think he does very well in his role as a man who just has to keep rolling with the punches because everybody he encounters doesn't like him for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no... Well, again, once, once he finally gets on the bus, surprise, he's not picking up his son. He's a high school yes. student. No one wants to sit with him, not even like the glasses held together with tape other nerds. Yeah, that's like, right. Like, for no reason, everyone hates him except yes. for Harry Osborn. Who doesn't take the bus. It makes me wonder what he did prior to this. Because <laughs> yeah, sure. he seems relatively socially Justin. Well, he has friends in the comics. Yeah. Like, right? he's a nerd, yeah. and he gets bullied, but yeah. people... Some people like He's him. He's got friends. Nobody likes him on the bus. Nobody likes him in the city. Nobody <laughs> likes him at the Daily Bugle. Like, everybody introduces himself to us like, nah, nah, get well, out of my face. Stop wasting my time. It's funny, though, because on set, people notoriously didn't like Tobey Maguire. There's really? an interview with Joe Manganiello, who's in this movie. He plays Flash Thompson. 26-year-old Flash 26 Thompson. Flash. I looked it up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Actually, he's two or three years younger than the teacher. Side note, if you put up a photo of all the characters that go to the <laughs> 
science fair situation and you were like, pick out the teacher, <laughs> I might be like, is it the little bald guy? But maybe I wouldn't. <laughs> so there's an interview with Joe Manganiello a few years back where he talks about on set, the crew offered him a couple hundred bucks to accidentally just clock Toby Maguire in a fight. Wow. Yeah. Well, there was, there was a crew guy who came up to me and said, listen, um, I'll give you a hundred dollars if you if you hit him in the face by accident. And I looked over and like there was an electrician plugging something in, and he just looked up to me and gave me that look like. Did he take the money? No, he didn't. Because okay. he goes, well, I probably wouldn't have worked again if I had a broken Spider Man's nose. Yeah, right. I delayed the filming like months, mm -hmm. but. Tobey Maguire is also, look, I don't know anything about him personally, but yeah, if you've ever seen the movie Molly's Game, which is based on a real life story, uh, the Michael Cera character from that, who's a complete son of a bitch, is based on Tobey Maguire. Interesting. Yeah, maybe that was just a phase he was going through, but he was not but a he's, it's clearly But it's clearly made an impression on certain <laughs> directors and screenwriters. Absolutely. At least he got ripped. He was kind of the first, mm -hmm. not the first, but you know, that kind of transformation wasn't super common then. Now it is. Yeah, for you're sure. You're getting Paul Rudd, you're getting him some abs. Don't mm. even worry about it. Yeah, back then, it was unusual. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, it was him and the actor playing Aunt May. She also got ripped. Yeah, she did. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the reason he got the role was because there was... Well, that the studio wasn't really keen on him because they're like, yeah, he's a good actor, but can he do the action stuff? And there's like test footage and it'll be in the video, I'm sure. You're probably looking at it right now where he kind of proves that, yeah, he can kind of do that stuff. Which he can. Yeah. But also, you don't really need him to do it. Right, okay. Yeah. In, in, in the sense that you could CGI everything or you could stunt man yeah, everything. Stu it, he's a man in a mask. He exactly, can be anything. Yeah. He can be anyone. And the times when he's not in a mask, he's in shadow or it's the back of his head or whatever. Like the bit where they fight, in, where he fights in the alley with the mask off mm -hmm, and it's raining. Sure. That could be anybody. Yeah, for sure. What do you think of Mary Jane Watson? Look, I, here's the thing. I, I think individually, Peter Parker and Mary Jane, I think... Kirsten Dunst and Tobey Maguire do a fine job, except in any scene where they're together and having any kind of emotional moment where it's just this. Which is weird because they were in a relationship. <laughs> Like around oh, the time of this those movie. Those two actors, right, <laughs> yeah. okay. But I don't know, it's just... Didn't translate? Uh, look, I think what doesn't translate, and I spoke about it earlier, I think yeah. a lot of visually, visually a lot of stuff does, a lot of the action sequences do, but I think there's a certain amount of schmaltz relating to characters in relationships that works on the page, but I think it's dialogue that doesn't really translate to live action. Like that bit where she's like, what did you tell Spider-Man about me? And he's well, like, actually, well, uh, she, I when, I, when, when I looked into her, her eyes, eyes I, I felt said, alive but also dead, and I felt... <laughs> Excited, but also not excited, and I felt happy, but also sad. What's happening? I felt like it was the end of the universe. If that, someone said that to me, I'd be like, okay. There is a very good case, and I'm sure somebody's done this already, but if they haven't, get on it. There's got to be a really easy way to recut this movie into Peter Parker as an insane stalker. Because <laughs> there's so many. I just came across town to see you. Yeah. I just took two buses at a cab. Yeah. Did Harry know? Nah, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> didn't tell, tell him. him. Yeah, this is, yeah. I'm on a solo mission here. Speaking of Harry, I've got a quote here, a uh, piece of trivia. James Franco joked about Tobey Maguire and said he had frog-like features on set. Uh, and he was <laughs> But offset, chiseled like a god. <laughs> uh, this created friction between the two actors, uh, which led to an existing uh, rivalry, which I think I'm oh, sure Oh, it's still happening. Cool. I'm sure it's cooled by You'd now. You'd hope so, right? Yeah, yeah but I think yeah. that's quite funny. But he, I think he's not very good in this either. I think he's a good actor. <laughs> Who is good in this? Stuff. Willem Dafoe is good Willem in Dafoe this. Willem Dafoe is terrific in he's this. He's chewing some scenery, but he's also... He, he's just... He's, and he's, he's doing the dual roles. Yeah, uh-huh. He's Sometimes let, in the same scene. Yes. He's let down by the goblin costume. Well, yeah, look, in terms of costumes, one thing I do like about this movie, and again, mm. visual stuff that, that Sam Raimi clearly went, we've got to get this right, yep. is the, the Spider-Man costume is... Mwah, it's, yeah. It's, it's chef's kiss. It's so good. I it's, think their eyes could be a bit whiter. That's fine. <laughs> but I think you like look, the raised yeah. webbing. And, I mean, recent, yeah. recently there was a sort of a, a campaign to get the Sam Raimi Spider Man costume in the yeah. Spider Man PS4 game. Yeah. And look, having rewatched this just now, I get it. Like, yeah. it's a, it looks, oh, it's so good. It's Chef's Kiss, you say? Yeah, but but I don't understand why that couldn't have been translated to the Green Goblin costume. I was watching but some behind the scenes stuff and they talk about it. And they're like, it's Avi Arid said specifically. Who is a long time Marvel uh, producer? Spider Man ruiner. Uh, he said <laughs> something along the lines of the Green Goblin is too cheesy in the comics. He's got his accent. Where's right. he from? I don't uh -huh. know. They actually did try, and this was released a few years back, like a motorized goblin face. Yeah, right. And it looks terrific. Some might say Willem Dafoe has a motorized goblin face. Well, I figured that's why they got him. Yeah, he's, right. He's yes. got a real goblin face. Yeah. I think if you just painted him green, you'd be like, yeah, that's a goblin. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Avi Arad said that it's because it's too cheesy. Yeah. But I, mean, I guess if you do go directly 
purple spandex rubber goblin mask. Yeah. Then yeah. There is a scene though in this movie where and again, speaking of corny, and I think yeah. this will probably that I can we can talk about the costume. There is a scene where Spider Man goes up to rescue what he thinks is a woman like a crying woman in a burning building, yeah. and it turns out to be the Green Goblin wearing an old lady shawl. I think that would be a perfect opportunity to transform that version of the Goblin suit. Like he's right. like he's wearing rags and he's surrounded by fire. Yeah, just like melt the suit. Oh yeah, and like covered idea. in rags, and it's yeah. a, it's the comic book Green Goblin suit. There you go. It's a real rags to Goblin story. Absolutely, it yeah. is. That's why I love this movie. But I get it. Like I understand they wanted to make it realistic and like it's military tech, and they wanted to justify the yeah. universe. It's the same with the. Web shooters. Which are viscerally unpleasant to watch. Boy, having, are they? Having, having done a rewatch of this, just having him squeeze his wrists and yeah. Do you reckon squelch he, it out. He'd have to keep hydrated. Yeah. Because that's a lot of web all the time, right? Yeah, right, absolutely. Yeah. Do you think his body's grown extra sacks? It would have to. Yeah. What a, a thing that I didn't know is that Oscorp's main rival, Quest Aerospace, is a real company. It's not a military company. It's a company that made like remote control cars and stuff. And Marvel bought them oh, in the eighties, okay. and so they were like, "Let's let's oh, put nice. them in as a fun little nod." Their Goblin Glider equivalent is way worse. I was going to say <laughs> if they made, if they were to have made an Iron Man movie in the nineties, as they had planned to with maybe Tom Cruise, that's what it would have looked like. Like that weird standy uppy yeah, one man fridge. submarine <laughs> fridge situation. There's some wonky CGI in this. I and there's some wonky compositing. There's yeah. a lot of very obvious green screen. Yes. The bit where he's testing his powers, which I quite like where he's leaping across the rooftop. It's clearly like a like a weird composite shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bit where he throws one of the goblin bombs and the board members all turn to skeletons. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> and yet Mary Jane and Harry Osborn, who are like two yeah, feet away, don't. Don't. And the other thing about Mary Jane is she doesn't really do much. Except just kind of scream. Like there's, and there's even a moment where Willem Dafoe's like, what do you think she's interested in you, in you for? Not for your bloody looks or your brains, you dumbass. I think James Franco and Kirsten Dunst are about the same level of attractive. Like, I don't look at those two and go, why would she be with him? Yeah, right. And I'm uh-huh. like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Also, the upside, upside down kiss is weird. I don't like it. I know it's iconic <laughs> and whatever, but... It's weird and In gross. retrospect, that only met like twice. And she doesn't even know what he looks like. Uncle Ben's good. I like that actor. Uh-huh. I love the discussion in the car. Uh-huh. I think it's the best discussion that they've done for that on film. I mean, they did. The only other one that we've seen is The Amazing Spider-Man, and they, they didn't even dare to say with great power. It's like, listen, if you've got a responsibility, then maybe you should use your responsibility to do the best thing that you could possibly do at that exact <laughs> moment in time. Oh, I've been shot! <laughs> <laughs> but this... I buy the actor. Yeah. Uh-huh. I buy Toby Maguire in that scene. Yeah. Uh-huh. You feel kind of the hurt when he kind of when rejects he's, his. Yep. When he's killed by the Sandman. <laughs> yes, that's right. And not this guy. <laughs> not this guy. Yeah. We'll and get not back weird to that. wandered, t- frosted tips man. Yeah. Mm. What do you think about the action though in this? I think it's mixed. There's some shots that are great. Yes. There's the shot at the end when uh, Green Goblin throws all those sort of razor boomerangs at Spider Man, and he likes jumps out of the way and they all spin around him. Well, like, I think that bit looks sick. dumb. You would. He's just... Yeah, I know. And obviously they just, you know, put the Made him jump and then they... They put the boomerangs wherever, they, wherever he wasn't. But, yeah. I mean, I think that w- that was cool and it looked yeah. direct, came directly well, out I of didn't the comic like books. You wouldn't. There's some action sequences I like. I love the bit, uh, the confrontation they have at the end where he punches the Green Goblin and he flies back and then he webs him back down and then kicks him in the head. Yeah, and, like, yeah. pulling the building down, the, the wall down on him and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. is all really good. And it also looks like... Peter Parker is really injured, like super yeah, right. injured, and you don't really get that in any of the other movies. Well, he was because the crew dropped just... the crew dropped a wall on him, so <laughs> like that bomb going off at his face, and yeah. he's just torn up. It's kind of a horrific kind of moment. There's, you can see that kind of Sam Raimi horror element. I feel oh in for this sure, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's it feels like the camera's sort of on a rubbery tripod. Yeah, right. Like it's always bouncing back and forth. I feel that's that's kind of like the Sam Raimi trademark. Mm-hmm. Speaking of bloody cameras, though, they invented this new camera system for swing through the city it's this system that could drop 50 stories very suddenly <laughs> so they drop that between buildings and then you animate spider-man kind of oh, moving I see. In and out right and it, uh-huh. yeah it's it's quite good and they they used a little bit in this but they used a lot more in there well they put it on a truck or something and they just hang it down oh, okay. between buildings that's kind of like what they do at sports games i guess oh. but, but more dangerous i wouldn't know anything about that i'm sorry i didn't mean to bring that up uh, can i bring this up though the green goblin gets impaled on his balls at the end i don't know why they chose to do that goes right into his balls. Does it? Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Not the gut, not, not the, the chest, not right. the neck, uh-huh. not the ear. Huh. Right his balls. Yeah. I just don't think that would have killed him immediately. I think it would have uh, 
Well, that's what he deserves, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. A slow death from his balls. <laughs> Quite frankly, yes. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, you mess with New York, you get the horns, baby. Yeah, <laughs> the horns and the balls. <laughs> that's that's right. all what all the New Yorkers on the bridge, they're yeah. aiming for his balls. The first thing that the goblin gets hit with doesn't make sense because he's entirely under the bridge when he gets hit with it. Oh, I see. Like, he goes under and he's going to come out. Uh -huh. And then he gets hit in there with a pipe or a brick. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's some New York bridge dwellers. <laughs> okay, People who right. live under that bridge. So sure. It's well, all part of New York. You mess with them, you mess with everybody. You get the horns. Mm -hmm. I understand why they did it, because this, this scene was done after 9-11. It was like, let's get yeah, some right. New York unity and, and stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there is tension in that scene where he has to catch Mary Jane and the cable cut. It's, it's a callback to the death of Gwen Stacy and whatever. I think uh -huh. that scene's quite good. But there's that, all, that also contains... Maybe like the worst villain dialogue that I, it's it's the one where it's like you know it's tough you shouldn't be a hero because if you're a hero then maybe some lunatic in a green goblin suit will come up and present you with a sadistic problem that you have to solve and he's just and here it there. is <laughs> he's just standing there going uh huh yep yep, yep. what is it maybe move yeah <laughs> maybe make a move maybe do something in advance here <laughs> maybe plan something out. You know? Just quickly, there's some standout casting in this. Some names that have become big names. Uh, well, J.K. Simmons, who's he was a he was a known actor, but this yeah, right. made him huge. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Banks is in this. She's Betty, Betty Brand, Brand, yeah. Joe Manganiello, who we mentioned, and Octavia Spencer, who's at the wrestling match, being like, "You sure you want to get beat up in this wrestling match?" And he's like, "Yeah, I want to make oh, a, yeah, that's I want to make right. a uh -huh. gay slur at this wrestler." So yeah, <laughs> please let me. My favorite part of that sequence is first of all, he gets they they put him in a cage match. Yeah, and he's like, "What? I didn't sign up for a cage match." This is your ideal situation. You're going to do fine in a cage match. <laughs> if anything, having an open air thing would make it more difficult for you to win this. Yeah. Secondly, what I liked about it is when Bruce Campbell introduces him as the amazing Spider-Man, Yes. the the ring girls immediately start mocking him. Yeah. And one of them's like, I'm going to take your eight legs and beat you to death with them or whatever. And I'm like, that's good improv. <laughs> like, you've just learned he's Spider-Man and you're already, you're already, just for you're already riffing, I, which I great. respect. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of environment it is where you do a real wrestling match with a lunatic. Like, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. And why wrestling... That's true. Why not some kind of MMA or boxing? It's just well, MMA wasn't big at that point. I guess I it think, wasn't. Yeah. Well, neither was weird improv wrestling matches. <laughs> all right, fine. But then again, Mysterio was running it. I guess. Ma yeah, because that was the plan all along. That's true. Um, we get a lot of little nods to other properties that maybe they were going to bring up later. Ed, the the star photographer at the Daily Bugle is Eddie. Yeah, they which mentioned might have been yep. Eddie Brock. Yeah. Peter Parker loses his job with Doctor Connors, I think, which is yes. mentioned in in but it, we never seen who's well, the lizard shows up in two, yeah, two and three. Yeah, they reference other comic book properties. We're like, you're not Superman, you know. Mm. Oh, I want to Shazam. talk about yeah. I want to talk about J.K. Simmons. That's the best in terms of surprises. I think maybe. Chris Evans edged him out in terms of like, well, I didn't, I wasn't sure I was going to like this character, but, yeah. but he, this is a great depiction of this character on screen. But in sure. terms of just absolutely 100% nailed the conversion from comic book to movie, I yes. think J.K. Simmons as uh, J. J. Jonah Jameson, Jameson yeah. is perfect and Agreed. will never be will never be bettered. I would like to see another Jameson in the Spider-Man movies. I don't know who's going to take that role. Yeah. His dialogue's great. The look is dead on. The look is dead on, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It feels like he's just throwing out real insults, like on set. Yes, right. It feels like he's not acting. He's just screaming at everybody. Yeah. And I guess it's if you like look jazz. At, it's exactly like jazz. That's what I was going to say. He's great at screaming at people. Yep. There's a bit where he throws his cigar out the window and then it comes back on. Yes. Like the Green Goblin takes the time to throw it back onto his <laughs> yes. desk before he blows up his office. What I find really interesting about that character as well, like he's a he's a dog of a bloke, mm -hmm. but when the Green Goblin's got him and, and is like, who's taken the photographs? He is, does, it, is it the, the yeah, boy right next to you? He doesn't like, no. rat him out. Yeah, right. Which is just crazy to me, which means there's some kind of human being inside that's, that guy. That's, a, that's yeah. the journalistic integrity you just don't see anymore, you know? <laughs> I agree. Mm. Uh, look, special special shout-outs to all the background extras. Oh, my God. There's one. Thank you. Having seen it a couple of times, I was always focused on the main action. The foreground. The foreground, obviously, but I think... Have, you know, if you, when you have time to watch it a couple more times, I'm like, there's some weird stuff happening back here. Yes. The, in the crime fighting montage, the first one where Spider-Man's like, I'm really going to dedicate myself to crime fighting. I love and he, it. And he busts up a whole bunch of bank robbers and whatever. He webs up two bank robbers, one of which is a woman wearing a midriff top, which I just... <laughs> that's I, very... That's very 2002. 2002 yeah. I'm, I'm like, she's like, well, look, we should rob this bank, but I'm going to look like Kim Possible while I do it. <laughs> My favourite one is... 
during the bit where Spider-Man beats up Flash Thompson, mm -hmm. there's a guy standing behind Mary Jane Watson and he's got glasses and curly hair and just the expressions on his face. There's one moment he's just like, what's happening? <laughs> and the next moment they cut back to him and he's clapping because the fight went well. And then they cut back to him again and he's just like, what's happening? <laughs> and then they cut back again and he's just waving his arms around like, I don't understand what's going on. That's incredible. It's amazing. In the in the fight between Flash and Peter Parker, yeah. when Spider-Man- Two grown men. Yes. <laughs> fighting in a school <laughs> before the police arrive. What I also enjoyed is there's a moment where you see time slow down. Yeah. Uh, because he's you know Spider-Man's reflexes are so good and you do see one boy shooting a spitball at another yeah. boy and I'm like man they nostalgia took yeah man they took this from Fight Club didn't they <laughs> they really did yeah. yes and uh, I just want to give sp special mention to the bit where he catches the tray of food Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not CGI. They did it for real with sticky stuff on the bottom of each object. It was 156 takes. Oh, my goodness. So there you wow. bloody go. Well, no wonder. Look, I don't want to lay any blame anywhere, but I think if you like, why does Toby, why did Tobey Maguire have a bad attitude in this movie? <laughs> I think he can probably lay the blame on the fact that he had to wave a tray round <laughs> while food landed on it 156 <laughs> times before they let him leave that day. <laughs> so, you know. Fair point. Anyway, I'd love to know what people actually think think of this movie now yeah. i think look it's obviously dated it's 18 years old or whatever at this point mm -hmm. 17 years old but there's a lot of good stuff in here and a lot of stuff that would go on to be better stuff as the years go on i like don't macy gray like macy gray exactly it's not the best spider-man movie mm. uh it's certainly not the worst one absolutely which we'll, not which we'll get to but there's a lot of pioneering stuff here which i think you know we wouldn't be where we were today as in me and you mason talking mm -hmm. about this movie if we hadn't seen this movie and then do this conversation this conversation would have a lot less content in it, I imagine. I'd imagine so. Mm -hmm. We're back for Spider-Man 2. Caravan of Garbage is here. People are very upset. Some people are very upset that we're covering this special, in Caravan of Garbage. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> special shout-outs to people who haven't watched this video, <laughs> but have already put a comment that's like, How dare you put this Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man movie that's ever been ever been made, and you, you wouldn't know nothing about this. We're going to say good stuff about it. Nah, it sucks. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I, really, I quite like this film. Me too. I think it's a, a lot of things kind of settle in into the series. It's the pinnacle of this trilogy. I think it is. But there's still some stuff that I don't like. Oh, my. My goodness. That's right, yeah. Excuse me a moment while I make a YouTube comment. <laughs> and hey, you don't know nothing. And look, if people, uh, if people could leave a like, that'd be great. It gets this video more traction. It gets it seen. It gets it out there in the World Wide Web spider web. There we go. Oh my goodness, you've tied it Thank all together. You. Like Spider-Man tying together some robbers. Uh, were you hyped about this movie when it was... When it Absolutely was, yeah. I was. And of course you were there to see well-known uh, character actor Alfred Molina. Absolutely I like, was. The guy from Chocolat. Are you kidding me? The, Come on. The guy from the very start of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. The spider on him and then he gets impaled by spikes you kidding me he's a good choice he is a good choice there's some things about that character i'm not entirely understanding of look give me hit me with one okay for one he's supposed to be a very intelligent man and yet he's like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna drill these octopus arms into my back with an exposed microchip so they don't take over <laughs> um, my body james 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 it's a microchip that's covered in a very thin piece of glass <laughs> that is vulnerable to heat and is on the back of his exposed neck yes now that i say it out loud you're right <laughs> But the thing is, his idea of unlimited power is, okay, I need to wear this rig, stand in front of the sun, yes. which is just going <laughs> to give me cancer. These goggles will be fine. Yep. And I just got to control the energy coming off it forever. Nobody else is wearing the goggles No, as well. they're not. Nobody else in the room. <laughs> and I'm not going to turn my back on the sun, so this chip... It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. But he does turn his back on the sun. Very quickly. Almost <laughs> immediately, yes. You're right. He, is that going to be his job from this point forward? Is just to stand in front of this thing with these wibbly wobbly arms? Also, is this the first time he's tried this rig? Yes. You'd think he'd take his jacket off and there'd be like all these other puncture wounds from all yeah. the previous times he's tried it, but he hasn't. Nah. He's just like, yeah, first time in front of an audience. <laughs> what if he just? What if they all sunk into his back and he's like, oh, no. Oh, presentation's over, everybody. No. Nah. No, this sucks. I should have, like, used a joystick or something. I'm actually not a medical doctor. I don't know why I thought this would work. Ah, <laughs> oh, I was in Boogie Nights. Do you remember that? 
<laughs> yeah, that was good. I, I love the rig. They're great because yeah. there's four people on every arm. Yeah, so right. So it's like uh-huh. 16 in total to make it and happen. And they're so, like, they're so detailed. They're terrifying. Yeah. And they're different. Like, each yeah. one of them have, like, a different kind of look like to them. Like a claw. Yeah. So there are claws one's, and there are scoops. Yeah, one's got a spike. And they've got scary red eyes. Yeah. Because it's an artificial intelligence and it's kind of like being restrained by this, like, little chip. Mm. Again, under the little piece of glass. <laughs> put it in a box. Uh, put it in a black box. Yeah, I agree. Why don't they make all the arms out of a black box? Because you know then they'd I mean? be indestructible, you dumbass. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> but it's like we don't really get any insight into what they want. Clearly, they want to, they they want to build the sun, build the sun, and they want to rob banks. Yeah, because it's fun, but only in service of the sun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he also tells that weird joke about the rubber band around the twenty. He does bill. open it with that. I don't know why he tells that joke. Before we start, has anybody lost a large roll of twenty dollar bills in a rubber band? Because we found the rubber band. Like, to what end? Uh-huh. Is it because he's like, look, I'm going to ignite a sun in front of everybody, but this will calm everybody down. <laughs> right. This, this terrible joke. It's a terrible joke. Also, he's just a man, and he gets punched uh, so he's, much. He's famed character actor Alfred Molina. Okay, sorry. He was in Maverick, 1994. If Spider-Man punched character actor Alfred Molina in the face... He'd die. That fight is over. Yeah. He's just a man. Yeah. He gets hit... So much in this movie, but they never address. I think he shouldn't have landed a punch on him. I think the arms should have yeah. stopped him every time. Because it's not like the Green Goblin or Venom, where mm. like his physiology's been altered and he's super strong and super invulnerable. No, like, even crazy. Even if you had crazy man strength, yeah, that doesn't factor into that. Spider Man could punch your head off. <laughs> and I know traditionally we always say like, oh, Spider Man pulls his punches when he fights a, um, a regular man. Not he this guy. He wouldn't. Well, exactly. And this guy's going after Aunt May. Yeah, he's going after Mary Jane. He's building a son. He's building the sun. <laughs> exactly. Hit him really hard just once and see what happened. Hit him in the balls, really. Absolutely. That worked last time for the Green Goblin. It really did. Really took the wind out of his sails. It killed him. It, yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing is you could have him be knocked out and the arms still work. Yeah, for because sure. Because there is the sequence where they're going to take him off him in surgery. It's a great sequence, the mm. horror sequence. Yes. And they're, and they're fighting. They're cleaning up the room. Yeah. That bit where the woman gets dragged with the with the nails. Yeah. That's terrific. Apparently that effect's just done with just, it's just a wax floor. Oh, oh, okay. It's, cool. it's so effective. Also, John Landis is killed in that scene, which is also good. <laughs> yeah. Also, originally he was going to be the same age as Peter Parker, and there was going to be a love triangle. Oh, teenage Peter Parker. That's right. <laughs> but there was going to be a love triangle between him and Mary Jane and Peter. And Avi Arad, in one yes. of the good decisions he's made in his life, one of three relating to Spider Man, was like, "Let's not do a love triangle. Let's, let's." That's that's super weird. Traditionally, if there's going to be any kind of romantic subplot in a in a Doctor Octopus comic book, mm. it's usually Doctor Octopus falls in love with Aunt May. Absolutely, they've been married before. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He was also going to be in the first movie like there's some concept that they did and it's more kind of gremlin-y and, and creepy and sinister and this they kind of went more clean cut scientists with a bulk out and mm-hmm. some sinister arms what i also really love about it is the little things that it does like it'll light a cigar tip a hat drink a whiskey <laughs> oh is it an mra <laughs> yeah that's it'll right. drink a whiskey and it'll tip your fedora for you <laughs> so, there's some great outtakes of them trying to get that to work which is quite good but i think the the look of this character the performance all of it's really good. I'm driving. You no, know, the stuff that I don't really understand about it, I'm fine with. And the other thing was they were going to do, a big part of this, this movie is that they do the Superman 2 thing where he doesn't want to be a, su- a superhero anymore. Spider-Man no more. Exactly. They do that exact comic shot of the, the suit in the bin or whatever. Yeah, it's from the mm-hmm. comics. But he, he's losing his powers because he, you know, he's, he's in love and it's... It's, it's a performance issue. It, yeah. He's it, nervous. It's exactly what it Happens is. Happens to yeah. everyone. It really does. Mm. Uh, I mean, some people, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> but he was going to have an inhibitor chip from Doc Ock. Which oh, slowed him down. He'd be like, Spider-Man, you can't use your powers anymore because i put a chip on the back of your neck. Oh, you've broken it. <laughs> but there's some great action in this. I agree. Really terrific to this day stands up there, there is some great action in this. I, th- I mean, uh, Some of it, in retrospect, maybe doesn't make a lot of sense. There's a scene towards the middle where Doc Ock wants to go and get Peter Parker. Yep. And his initial move is to throw a car at him. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing that he's yeah. Spider-Man. Throw a car at regular man, Peter Parker. <laughs> and then what? 
<laughs> pick up his head and hope it turns in the direction of Spider Man. <laughs> he doesn't know it's Spider Man. He really does. But that yeah. sequence where he it would have killed him if he wasn't Spider Man. It would have killed, killed everybody. Yeah. He's lucky that cafe was very sparsely populated. I remember when I first saw that trailer. Yeah. Because the very first thing I saw from this was that scene yeah. online on, on Apple trailers, but that yeah. was a thing. Oh, maybe yes, it was. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. it still is. But I just saw that and just went, holy hell. You watched it and then you waited 20 minutes for it to load again and you <laughs> yeah, watched it a watched second it again. time. It, that sold me on like, it's this romantic tender moment and it is, is he going to admit that his true feelings and then the car comes and doesn't kill him and then they have to do <laughs> they dodge out of the way by yeah. mere millimetres. Oh, so good. I love the behind the scenes. There's like this twirly rig that they're in in a green screen room. The compositing is much better in this so you can't, it looks like they're just yeah. in the same space. That's true. Although yeah. I think there's, in Spider-Man 2, I think we've hit that era of, we can CGI anything. Yeah. We should definitely CGI everything. There's a bit where Doc Ock carries Mary Jane out of the coffee shop and that looks right. pretty <laughs> terrible. Yeah, right. Yeah, CGI people aren't great. Though there is one at the end when Doc Ock is killed and he goes past the camera. That's CGI. And you can tell. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's quite good. I agree, for yeah. 2004. Okay, action scenes though. There's a bit where he goes in between on the truck. Yeah, he like yeah, yeah. Scoots through on it. Well, there's obviously the the much replicated stopping the train sequence. Stopping which the train it, sequence is incredible. Which again is it's it's referenced in Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, and the way it escalates, it's insane. There's actually an extended sequence for it in the deleted scenes where there's it's just more punching. There's one part where they tumble into a building and Spider Man is just clocking him in the head like again and again. I'm like, well, I see why they took this yes. out because it would have killed him. And then he's just punching a red puddle. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, ooh, also you've killed character actor Alfred Molina. <laughs> Frida. Yeah. Very good. And then he gets, Spider-Man gets thrown out the window and on the way out he webs Doc Ock and pulls him out with him. Uh -huh. It's really great. Yeah. Mm. The bank vault scene. I never understood how he's, why he's throwing bags of gold. I'm like, what? What bank is this? <laughs> what are we, what are we doing with bags of gold? Yep. Is this Scrooge McDuck's vault? What is this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the coins apparently were supposed to be found on a sunken ship and they're nearly a century old. So they're supposed to be vintage coins in this huh. vault. That's never explained in the movie, obviously. Is that a reference to like a some sort of pirate superhero that we never get a, a sense no of? I have no idea. But yeah. I might at one point points out that there are other superheroes in this universe flying about saving the day. Who do you think it might be? It's probably Superman. It's probably New Goblin. It's Testing probably New his, Goblin. His, exactly. his... <laughs> they couldn't come up with a better name. Didn't make him the Hobgoblin. Why wouldn't you? We'll get to it. All right. Yeah. Harry Osborne, speaking of him, I think performances all round are better in this movie. Uh-huh, yeah. He's better, though there is like moments where he's like, hi, Peter, happy birthday. Who the fuck is Spider-Man? <laughs> right. Look, we're good. We're friends. I love you like a brother. Where's Spider-Man? Where is... You... <laughs> I'll never forgive him. Where is he? Why are you? Why are you friends with him? The suit's better in this as well. I agree. Do you feel it's I like a so. deeper red? They've done some little modifications where it's clearly the same universe and the same suit and whatever, but it just it pops more. Uh -huh. Like the mouth still doesn't move when he talks, and it's very noticeable when he's like in the elevator next to that guy and he's just standing there and they're yeah. having a chat. He's in the elevator with Mister Two Thousand and Four, <laughs> the most Two Thousand and Four man who ever lived. <laughs> Can I riff for you? Can I come up with a couple ideas for you? Just what my company would do. Let's see what I got. How about um, with his hair and his earring, <laughs> big oh, open yeah. collar? Oh yeah. But then there's a moment where his, you know, his webs are failing, uh -huh. and you see his it mouth. Happens sometimes. It happens to some people mm. sometimes. Yeah. You mm. see his mouth animate at that point and go, oh no, as he as he kind of tumbles uh, out of yeah, the sky. Uh -huh. So because with that Spider-Man costume. There is a shell underneath it which keeps the same face structure for every person that wears it. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's sure. kind of the way, the way it, it okay, is, yeah. yeah. This movie is all about, man, Spider-Man is really downtrodden. <laughs> yes. The, the bank is foreclosing on Aunt May's house and Harry Osborn hates Spider-Man and he can't tell Mary Jane that he loves him. And, and she hates him. And she hates him and he's always his behind. His bike gets run over. Exactly. He's always behind. He gets fired. He's, he's always behind on his rent. And he's Bruce failing. Campbell won't let him into the theatre. Exactly. He's failing all his classes. It's just really, it's pretty grim there's out a, there. There's a moment where he's getting hit in the head with bags. The bag that really hits him is Sam Raimi, apparently. Oh, I see. There's, there's an outtake where the, the bag strap gets looped on his head and like drags him. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's pretty great. So yeah. is, does that mean that Tobey Maguire bad vibes from the first movie where apparently the crew hated him? Did that move on to the director? And may With have. the director like, there's a scene where actually um, a lot of stuff gets thrown at you. Mm. It's real stuff. We wanted to look real. <laughs> yeah. It's a brick in a bag. <laughs> Sorry, I don't make the rules. There is some Tobey Maguire difficulty surrounding this movie. This is I'm sure a lot of people know this, but he was going to drop out because of a back injury and they cast Jake Gyllenhaal in the role. Yeah, right. This was also parodied in Entourage with the Aquaman story. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Vince is out. 
Jake Gyllenhaal is in. I mean, Entourage in itself is a parody, I guess. Of good television? <laughs> I guess it is, yeah. <laughs> so he was ready to go, but uh, then his back got better and he, and he was fine. Well, the rumour is that he wanted more money for the role uh -huh. because he'd already signed Oh, and he faked a back injury. Yeah, or, you know, it was a bone spur situation. Oh, I see, I guess, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is that how it works? You get drafted in being Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, he'd already signed on for three. And, yeah. the, and the money was decided upon, but apparently his agents wanted 25 million or 10% of the gross. I'm assuming they looked at like the Michael Keaton deal for Batman or the Jack Nicholson went, well, that's where the money is. Yeah, right. Which uh -huh. makes sense, but that's not what ended up happening. There's still some nods to it though. You know the bit where he falls and he injures his back? Yes. And he's like, my back. That apparently was always in it. That's not a oh, okay, nod right. to Tobey Maguire. They didn't, they didn't put that in to punish him. Like there isn't a line where he's like, my back, I'm faking a back injury. <laughs> but there is an article headline that you see on the Daily Bugle, it's just a minor one that says, can chronic back pain lead to brain shrinkage? So that Brutal. sounds like a... And impotence. <laughs> it happens it sometimes. It happens to some people sometimes. Like Tobey Maguire, the actor. That's right. The Peter Parker stuff with Mary Jane is, is better. There's fewer... Very, sappy. very long, uh, sappy monologues yeah. towards each other. Yeah. And I think they even sort of turn that around where I think Doc Ock tells Peter Parker, you should you should read her poetry. Yeah. And then he's like, here, here we go. Here's some and she's like, stop talking. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what else is really good in this? Uh, the scene with Aunt May where he tells her that he could have stopped Uncle Ben's killer. Mm. He's really good in that scene. Mm -hmm. And the way that she doesn't even say anything, she just gets up and she's like, I can't fucking deal you with can't, this. You get a sense. Yeah. She, she's not, she's not going to fly off the handle, but she needs a lot of time to process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But then she turns around and goes, you're probably Spider-Man. So, <laughs> so get back Everyone, <laughs> pretty much every, everyone in New York knows. Yes. And they're keeping it under their hat, m'lady. Okay, that scene where Spider-Man's unmasked. Yes. And they carry him into the train. I really like it. But I think even in 2004, you'd take a photo of that and on your on your flip phone or whatever. And you'd be like, I got a photo of Spider-Man. And they'd be like, "That's a, is that a man? Is that you and Jake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> <laughs> so apparently I say Gyllenhaal wrong. But you know what? He's not here. I can do what I want. It is actually Gyllenhaaler. You and hello. Also, he doesn't watch Marvel movies, so he's not going to watch oh, yeah, a video. Right. But did you see that interview recently? Yeah, they're like, which is your favorite? It's like, oh, whatever one's your favorite. That's... <laughs> what is your favorite MCU movie that you aren't a part of? Mm. I like Thor Ragnarok. Oh, I was about to say that. Thor Ragnarok, I yep. think, is my But I love the bit where the guy's like, he's just a kid, no older than my son. But what he should say is, He's just a man, no older than my friend Terry. <laughs> We're the same age. Who's also a man. <laughs> He's no older than my friend, a man who is experiencing virility issues. It happens to everyone. <laughs> just look at him. He's clearly <laughs> impotent and can't get it up. <sighs> I love the raindrops keep falling on my head moment. Oh, yes. It's a, it's a nice nod to Butch Cassidy. Apparently, it was like a temporary track they put in, but it just lined up really well, so they, they oh, kept yes. it in. Also, Tobey Maguire's a vegan. He's eating a tofu hot dog, just so you oh, know. There you go. He's not a monster mason. He's yeah. a vegan, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, there's some stuff that I'm like, why are we doing this again? Burning building. Yeah, rescue. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's changed because he doesn't have his powers and whatever. Yeah, So right. there is that element. Uh -huh. But then Mary Jane just gets kidnapped again. And he has that to go true, yeah. her again. And then uh -huh. when we get to the third movie, again. She's she's doing stuff. She's the face of a, a perfume and she's a, she's in a she's in a play. And she's she's like, oh my god, this person's seen it five times, and this person's seen it two Alright, that's weird actually. <laughs> that someone's seen you play five times. It's too many. It's too many times. Your friends are weird. Your friends are weird. <laughs> Sometimes life gets in the way. Yeah. Unbelievable. You get over yourself, lady. There we go. You know, from the get-go, I like this movie better because for one, the opening sequence. And we talked about this in the last video. It's the Alex Ross paintings recapping the first movie. Mm, yes. And I also uh, love that unlike most Spider-Man films, it doesn't end with a fucking funeral. It's all, all, that they is all true, do, yeah. yeah. Out of the first five, this is the only one that doesn't. Oh, really? Yeah, really? which is wow. pretty incredible. Also, uh, it feels like more of a real New York. I think back to like the collapsing balcony from the first one. It feels very much like a set. Yeah, it does, this absolutely. This doesn't really ever feel like that. Mm, yeah. There is the moment, though, where he's delivering pizzas at the start, which I love. It's a great sequence. It's also a great moment in the video game if you ever played Spider-Man 2. It's terrific. I'd love to cover that one day. Do you play as Peter Parker on a you little bike? You play as Spider-Man delivering pizzas, but you can't do too many flips or you'll, or you'll mush the pizza. I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, even if he got those to, to Emily Deschanel on time, mm. they would have been all smushed, and she shouldn't have paid yeah. for them anyway. Absolutely Did you not. see them? They're all crushed down. I don't understand where he kept his clothes. 
clothes because he doesn't have a pouch. There's no yeah. bag on him. Did he just mush him in a pizza box? Yes. He must have. Also, what's he doing fixing the closet? You know what I mean? No time. No, there's no time. I mean, you're already late. You're probably yeah. not going to make it, but there is no time. Mm. Apparently, real pizza place in real life, real number. Yes, I know. Go. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> yes. It's a famous New York slice, Mason. I get it. Here's, some, here's a fun fact. I'm ready. In this movie, they were originally planning to introduce Doc Ock, Black Cat, the Lizard, and Harry as New Goblin, all in one movie. Wow. Is there room for more villains after New Goblin? <laughs> <laughs> well... I think this is a mistake that they then fold into the next movie. For sure, yeah. Just like the last movie, there's a, we've named a few of them. There's some kind of bit parts which then become bigger actors yeah, have right. gone on from. Uh, Daniel Day Kim is one of the scientists. That's true, yeah. Uh, he's a great actor. He's in Lost. Joey Diaz, the comedian. Oh, yes. Emily Deschanel. As the receptionist, You mentioned yeah. Bones. Uh, John McHale pre-hair plugs as the bank guy. And oh, that's scary. I didn't know that. Scandalous. Yeah, that's right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take down anyone. It's just, it's just a reality. Look, it happens to people sometimes. It happens to people. You're allowed to yeah. do these things to mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. It's fine. I also like that Willem Dafoe returns as a hallucination, and he again returns in the next one. I do wonder, though, whether they plan to bring him back fully at some oh, point. Oh, physically? As because, a... yeah, exactly. Because in the comics, he's oh, been dead so many times. And that's he comes true. Back. Back, yeah. and, I, and a lot of the time, like, the, the implication is that the goblin formula just keeps bringing you back. Like, yeah. you can never die. But, I mean, again, realistically, why would you bring back the green goblin lame when you have new goblin new and cool rad rad <laughs> rad mary jane leaves her fiance at the altar yeah and look he's just some boring guy ah uh, he's been to space who gives a shit everyone's been <laughs> to space it's it's no i know i know that's great that he's been to space he has nothing interesting to say mm -hmm. the only th interesting about that guy is that his father is somehow J. Jonah Jameson. That's true. I don't know how that works at all. Yeah. But again, there appears to be no repercussions no. for Peter Parker in the next movie that he <laughs> stole J. Jonah Jameson's son's fiance yeah. at the altar. Like, how humiliating. That is incredibly humiliating. That being said, I do get the sense that J. Jonah Jameson is relieved that, like, because he's like, don't open the caviar. Yeah. I think he'd be like, I can recoup some of these Save losses. A bit of cash here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Also, that guy becomes the Wolfman in the comics. I was going to say, he becomes a space <laughs> Wolfman. So there's your interesting, you know? Yeah, a thing that we never see. I'm back on the moon. I mentioned some deleted scenes before. A lot of them seem like they could just slot back in. There's a moment where Doc Ock holds Spider-Man in front of the passing train and he just gets cleaned up. It just, By a train? It, yeah, it's crazy. It's uh -huh. Yeah. So that kind of makes sense at the end when he gets knocked out so easily because he's been hit by a train. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. And there's a the bit where uh, J. Jonah Jameson, have you seen this, where he's wearing the Spider-Man suit? He puts suit? on the Spider-Man suit, yeah. We know now he's very fit. Oh, he lifts. Yeah. yeah he does cardio. He's big time. He's trim and nimble, but I respect it. He probably did the same training regime that Tobey Maguire did. He probably Just did. in case he needed, they needed a ring in. They're like, mm, look, we're not so keen on this Tobey Maguire character. Do you want to do dual roles, J.K. Simmons? Absolutely, I do, yes. Mm. Bring me pictures of Spider-Man. I will bring you pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> I uh I think this is a good movie. I do agree. I'm not it's... sure if I think it's the best Spider-Man movie, but I certainly I enjoyed rewatching it. There's some corny moments, but what I like about these movies is there's a real feel to them. Like there's a sense yeah. of universe and purpose and the way that Sam Raimi crafts this world. Yeah. I, I just I like being in it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think they're characters that if you took them out and you say put them in like the modern day MCU, they would feel kind of yeah. stylized and caricature-y because they are sort of big iconic characters and kind of simplified. But I think when you're in the world, mm. you get you're like, oh I'm in I'm in the comic book world here. Here, and we know? love it. And we love it. Yeah. Exactly. But we also hate it. We kind of hate it a bit. <laughs> it's it, This is the pinnacle of the first five. Yeah. For, for absolute. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome to Caravan of Garbage, everybody. But I do want to apologise to all the Spider-Man 3 apologists out there. I apologise that they like this crap movie. Oh, got you em! got him! You got him! I got him! It's not that bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But on, upon rewatch, there are some bright spots in this one. I watched it when it came out at cinemas, and yeah. I haven't seen it since. And look, if any point during this video, people could leave a like, that would help out greatly. Would it not? Absolutely! I realised during this that I hate Peter Parker's happiness in these movies. I think he's more insufferable happy than he is miserable. Yeah, that's probably true, actually. When he's yeah. miming along to Mary Jane... Yeah. And, and he's just like, and he's talking about how great it is to be Spider-Man and, and people that cheering, chanting his name or whatever. <laughs> and I know the point of it is that he's not hearing Mary Jane and her problems. Yeah, right. But it's uh. like, this guy is just unbearable. Why did he think that doing the upside down kiss in front of Mary Jane with a woman who's not his girlfriend that, would, he's, would that he play? barely knows? Yeah. <laughs> 
also, that's half your face in the daylight with mm. cameras. Yep. There's a lot of information that can be gleamed from people taking a photo of you. That's so true. They yeah. know you'd be man. They know you'd be white. <laughs> mm -hmm. They got your dental records. From Gwen Stacy's mouth. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot I forgot Bryce Dallas Howard was in this. That's right. And you know what? This movie is so long. Yeah. It's so long. Two hours 18, something like that. I kept forgetting that various characters were in the movie. <laughs> Every 20 minutes, a character would show up and I'd go, oh yeah, Sandman's in this. I forgot his entire plot line was in this movie. He is the standout villain from this movie. Yeah. Flint Marco, though. Yes. Flint Marco make like the Marco, Mar no, like no. the Marco shark. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a lot of things I like about that character. I think it's a good performance. The look is good. You like his t-shirt. I love his t-shirt. You like a t-shirt tucked into a nice pair of slacks. You no, know I do. The sand effects are incredible. You know, they're really good. Yeah, I've well, forgotten. It took him three years to develop that technology to make that formation mm. kind of happen. You know, when, when he mm. rebuilds himself, and you feel yeah. the emotion with his daughter. All of that is good. His theme tune. It's it's great. Mr. Sandman. <laughs> Send me a man. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Bring me the sandiest man that you can. Oh, there he is. But when you see, yeah, when you see the, like the, maybe the, the close granules? up of his hand, you see all the granules. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Hadn't been done before. Oh. Not like that. I mean, sure, we'd seen big sand faces in the mummy. Yep, that's right. But this is the next level sand face. Mm, that's yeah. right. Uh, you mentioned the music, though, because the score of this isn't Danny Elfman because he had a miserable experience working with Sam Raimi on number two. So he quit. He's like, oh. we're not friends and I'm not coming back. So they got Christopher Young to do it. And I think he does a good job. I that couldn't tell, certainly. There you go. But I, I... apparently they did end up collaborating, though. Like, he did come back and... Uh, for a little bit to kind of kind of help out. The Sandman uh, fight scenes are some of the best. When he's robbing the truck and yep. he sweeps his legs out and he turns to sand, he punches through. Yeah. They actually used an amputee in a Spider-Man suit to get that uh, get that effect so they could do it like on on set. So it looks like he's he's got his arm right through him. All oh, right. Yeah, okay. that's a, there's some good stuff huh, there. There you go. Yeah, and he also uh, there was a moment where Sandman punches a brick like a brick wall, and Thomas Hayden Church punched a real brick in that because they told him they swapped it out. They're like, yeah, that's a fake brick, and he hit it, and they went, oh, we actually we forgot to swap that out, and he's like, yeah, fucking no, I just broke my hand. There seems to be a theme emerging sure. amongst the crew members of the Spider-Man movies, which is they're violent thugs, yeah, and they want to hurt the cast of <laughs> yeah, these movies. Absolutely, but yeah, a lot of the a lot of the action sequences in this are surprisingly good. The opening uh, the opening sequence, mm. which is Peter Parker versus New Goblin. Yeah. Is actually really good, I think. And I think it would be great if it was a villain we cared about on any level, or a recognisable villain. If that were the Hobgoblin... Well, it is a recognisable villain from this series. Yes, for sure. It's Harry Osborn, yeah. But the costume, really... It's nothing. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely uh, nothing. Yeah. Was Tony Hawk and snowboarding big at this Mate, point in must time? must have been, yeah. I guess so, but, like, the mask is nothing. I didn't even recall that it was a snow, like a flying snowboard. I thought it was a goblin glider up until I, the rewatch. Oh, right, like, okay. Oh, that's a snowboard, yeah. See, I think there are moments in that scene that look really good, for example, when he's trying to catch the ring out of mid-air. And he yep. shoots the web, and it's really Tobey Maguire moving past the camera. But there's a lot of CGI faces and men just tumbling over each <laughs> other. A lot of that in this movie, I feel like there's less sets and more, and you mentioned this on Spider-Man 2, that we can kind of CGI anything now, but this movie really leads into that. There's a mm. lot of, we're fighting in a nothing space, you know, like that underground train tunnel that's just it's just tunnels up on tunnels and bridges and whatever, uh -huh. and the bit where the, where New Goblin, our favourite <laughs> our favorite new villain, is going through between there's the... There's so many, there's <laughs> so many villains you could have made him into. You didn't have to make him the Hobgoblin or the Green Goblin again. Anything. Apparently one of the masks you go past is supposed to be like a Hobgoblin reference. Because there's like a clear kind of perspexy, and I guess there's a bit of orange in it, but I didn't get that <laughs> right, at no. all. But you know the bit where he's going between the buildings, it just looks like he's standing nowhere. That's just true, kind of yeah. ducking and weaving uh -huh. it yeah, right. <laughs> back uh -huh. and forth. Well, but... I found it thrilling nonetheless. I think maybe it's because my expectations were so low for this one, I'm like... It's yeah. actually not bad. Not bad. Not a bad opening. Yeah, okay. Mm. Did you like the bit though? And I know I did, where he gets clotheslined and just hits the ground so fucking hard. Yeah. Like he really hits. He hits yeah. the wall and the bin and the ground. Or whatever. Yeah. It's great. And this, I think, that is the biggest illustration that this. It's a cartoony, stylized Spider-Man movie. Because first of all, he doesn't die immediately. No. Powers or no powers, but also he gets amnesia. Uh, absolutely, he does. I love how Peter Parker's like, oh, he's, he's got amnesia. It's fine now. Yeah. We'll just hang 
out and play basketball we'll all make omelets together what should I do with the millions of dollars worth of dangerous military technology <laughs> he has in his house just leave it there <laughs> sure why not what are the odds he'll get his memory back and go and retrieve those and try and kill me again that performance is so weird James Franco in yep. this movie the bit where they're sitting together in the in the diner and you know he throws him the wink when he's out the window and he's oh, yeah, eating the that's pie right. it's just it's yeah. so and he's got that weird like dead eye also did he finish the pie no I think he took it to go I was going to say yeah. in that in that nanosecond while the bus goes past <laughs> he's right. like quick can you take this to go here's, here's your tip okay <laughs> I love though when he finally figures out who he is and what he is and whatever mm-hmm. he threatens Mary Jane and's like you better tell Peter Parker to you bloody break up with him in a second she's like sure no worries she's not like didn't he knock you out? And didn't he kill your dad and also beat up the octopus man? Like, he, he could probably, <laughs> when it came down to it, he could probably sort you out again. Which oh, he sure, does, yeah. Yeah, by the way. Yeah, he absolutely does, yeah. <laughs> like, it's one of those situations where if everybody kind of just talks openly about it. Like, if they met on the bridge and she was like, hey, heads up, he's over there and he threatened to, to kill me and kill you. As far as I know, he doesn't have super hearing, so we can really <laughs> say anything we want. I mean, just act sad for a minute. I'm not actually breaking up with you. I'm just, just pretend I am and make a sad face. You're very good at your sad faces, Absolutely. Peter. You're doing one right now, regardless of what I'm saying. So just keep doing that. Then we'll pretend we're broken up. And then anyway, I'm going to be at the coffee shop with him later. Just close line him again. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, there's a, there's a third villain in this Spider-Man 3, because why wouldn't you have to put one on him? Uh, that is Venom. To mm-hmm. me, the most disappointing villain from this, because New Goblin, who cares? Sandman, I'm not, I wasn't really a fan uh-huh. at the time. You weren't a Sand fan? I was, exactly. A few months after we got the initial story, the idea came about, let's introduce the symbiote. Let's introduce the black suit. And of course, that means only one thing. Let's introduce Venom. So I heard when he was being put into the movie, I'm like, great, because I really want to see Venom on the big Topher screen. Topher great. Yeah. First off on that, you just said then, it's bad casting. The frosted tips, uh-huh. he's, he's too small. <laughs> like he put on like 24 pounds of muscle to play the role and he quit that 70 show to make it happen. Like the moment when he rolls up when there's the big crane accident, which uh-huh. I think looks quite good because that's one of the, you know, it's a practical set that kind of drops and uh-huh, things slide sure. across and whatever. And he's like, oh, that's your daughter hanging there. That's Gwen. Oh, by the way, I'm dating your daughter. It's not, it's not the time. Like, what are you... Yeah, read the room, What mate. are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's the farmer from Babe and probably Babe 2 Pig in the City. Probably, yeah. yeah. Like the look of it's fine, I guess, because it's, it's Venom isn't it? And he's meant to be like the douchebag version of Peter Parker, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, we were all fans of Venom back in the in the 90s and 2000s. Sure. I wanted Eddie Brock to be this hulking mass of a man. Like yeah. he's, he's got to appear to be physically like, like he could bully yeah. Peter Parker, you know? You're talking out of the costume, right? Yeah, yeah. out of the costume, yeah. yeah. And like the idea, you know, one of the, the elements of the symbiote costume is that it enhances your own strength or it enhances what you already have. And yeah. Like, because Eddie Brock's supposed to be this kind of, like, quite strong bodybuilder, that adds on to the Spider-Man strength and the symbiote strength to make him physically larger and more imposing yeah. than Spider-Man. But the version we get, he's he's the same size. Yeah, it's exactly, not, yeah. You know? I mean, the, the, the Tom Hardy Venom movie got a lot of stuff wrong, but at least size-wise. At least he got in that lobster tank. Exactly, that's right. What else right. do you want? Yeah, yeah, nothing. It was improv on set. They didn't even know they were going to do it, but he got in that lobster tank and then they're like, bring in some real lobsters and they're like, is this a good movie? And they're like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, does it? What I don't also like about this character is he just comes from nowhere. I'm talking about the symbiote. Symbiote, whatever. Mm. It just drops out of the sky. There's no explanation. It's not like it's drawn to Peter Parker. Like it is. Yep. Maybe that's why it landed there. But where'd it come from? Where'd we it don't come know. from? Yeah, right? Yeah, and I don't need an origin for everything, but it could have easily been the version that was created in a lab. But also one early version of what it was going to be, and we mocked this character in the last movie. John Jameson? John Jameson was going to bring it back from space. Perfect. Would have worked. And I guess if they'd laid the groundwork for that in Spider-Man 2, like in a, you know, final scene, we'd be like oh yeah that's pretty okay that makes yeah. a lot of sense that's some good foreshadowing but I guess uh, Sam Raimi had no intention of putting Venom in Spider-Man yeah. 3 so there wouldn't have been anything like that right? yeah exactly do we know why he was so adamant against putting I, Venom in this I think it just wasn't a character that he enjoyed or, or related to right and oh. I think that's very evident in the way that they deal with him in the end because he explodes sure and you see his skeleton yep you so absolutely both, do both the symbiote and Eddie Brock gone so dead yeah like some of the villains you're like well you know there's still a body and whatever and maybe the green goblin he's a hallucination he's coming back and the sandman blows off in the breeze and Dr. Octopus, he drowns, but the arms could probably swim themselves away. But this guy, it's like, no, he, he was atomized. Yeah, that's there is right. There's nothing uh-huh. left of this guy. Yeah. Uh, but apparently, though, that intro with John Jameson was to save time and money to bring him back from space. But just be like, look what we found in space. Like, you don't need to show him getting it and bringing it back no, down. No, absolutely and- <laughs> not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, again, this, this universe is kind of a closed universe. It's just Earth 
and it's just what happens pretty much in New York. Yeah. And just to bring something out of space for no reason. Yeah. It doesn't it's match like, the other the, no, the kind really of the tone and the other characters that have been brought in. Yeah. Mm. At all. Uh, early drafts for this movie though included uh, the lizard who Dylan Baker plays. You know, mm. he turns up again from two and Electro. And before Venom, it was Vulture. So that's kind of the the road that they were, they kind of took to get here. But of course, Mason, there's a there's a fourth villain in this movie. Emo Peter Parker who oh, shows up. Oh, that's right. It's weird and embarrassing mm. and it looks ridiculous he looks ridiculous and I guess I guess the justification is that mm. this is what a a real nerdy loser yeah. would, would 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 imagine think. being a cool yeah. guy was like this is apparently set one year after two and two is set two years after one so it's, it's technically 2021 ish all right okay you can buy sure. that right <laughs> yeah I you, can, you can see it absolutely <laughs> I, I mean can, I can tell from his youthful fringe that's my favorite move I think in the whole movie is when he he decides to be evil and he just fringes his hair yeah. down. He just pushes it down and goes, yeah, that's what evil cool this guys do. This is what I'm do. doing. Yeah. And the dance sequence is embarrassing. It's also weird how some of the women are like, oh, hello. And some of the women are like, yuck. So that's why I'm like, is this supposed to be cool or not cool? Yeah, I can't mystery, really tell what, you, mm. what you're going for mm. here. And it doesn't work. And his cool guy clothes are about as cool as his regular clothes. They really are. They're just slightly darker. The eyeliner and the, the, the flat hair. Like, I... Has he always known how to play piano? Has he just lacked the confidence That's to a really play good piano? question. Yeah, and then he punches Mary Jane in the face. Mm. So that's really good, isn't it? I disagree. Yeah. Well done, everyone. This whole <laughs> sequence is really, really good. And well thought out. Mm, yeah. But jazz, you know? But jazz. It's all about the girlfriends you don't punch. You can take that <laughs> out. Of course, Bruce Campbell returns as a French waiter. Uh, it's got my favourite line in it where he just says, Romance, I am French. And then there's a pause. <laughs> He's not French. What, Bruce Campbell isn't French? No, I just mean this, they were always going to do Quentin Beck, right? Because he's clearly not French in this movie. I don't think they. I, I look. I don't. I don't buy that. Theory they were rolling at all. it into four. There are storyboards that he that he was going to for part four that he no, was I, going no, to I be know Mysterio. That, I, I, I'm aware of that, but I feel as as we know, Sam Raimi puts Bruce Campbell into all his movies, regardless. He's he's right at the end of Darkman. He's the last mask in Darkman. Sure. Man. I know. I know the prevailing fan theory is that all the, his appearances in the first three Spider-Man movies, it's Quentin Beck. But I think the storyboard of him being led away, it's just it's the start of four. And he's just defeated a terrible, lame, bad guy in the form of Mysterio. Mm, I'd love to know what people think. Me too. Me also. Toby Maguire didn't work out for this movie. I was keeping a close eye on him. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh, he yeah. got ripped for one. We saw his shirtless two. Yep. We get a little bit of a peek. Yeah. In front of this the window. One, Spider-Man 3, he blade three it. Yeah, he blade three it. Which is fine. Yeah. Because he still looks good. But the, the moment where he's tearing off the symbiote... And oh, you yeah. see the back of him, it's just some other dude. Right. Like that, the back of his head, that's, <laughs> no, that's not him. Which is fine, man. I mean, I, th doing that is, is super difficult. But yeah, I just, I just think that's important that I let people know that I realise that. Sure. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know there is an alternate uh, editor's edition of this movie? Really? Yeah. It wasn't done by Topher Grace, was it? Because <laughs> I know he does, he does he, his own edits of he things, right? He does it. He does a Star Wars prequels. He mashes them all together. Exactly. I don't believe so. This was released officially uh, a few years back. One of the moments I mentioned earlier where uh, the, the butler, who's actually Bill Paxton's dad. Huh. There you go. That dude's way too old to be a butler, by the way. Like, he's like 87 years old. Like, you shouldn't be <laughs> yeah. butlering. The, the family should have been like, you could have retired 20 years ago. Don't make this guy work. Yeah, that's what exactly right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd think if if, were, if you were a nice rich family, you'd be like, we'll, we'll call you if you need, in, you know, just, just be in the, in the guest house. Yeah. But Harry Osborne's like, get some food. <laughs> We've got guests. Lay out a meat platter. <laughs> Whatever your name is, I don't even know. <laughs> so in the alternate cut, yes. he actually picks up a photo of his friends, like him and Mary Jane and Peter. And Harry like, Osborne does. Yeah, and he's like, uh -huh. oh, that's right, we're all mates, and I'm going to go help in the, in the bloody Sandman fight and the Venom fight at the end, which makes more sense to me. Not a guy being like, you know, the Goblin Glider was your bloody, your, your bloody dad killed himself or whatever. In his balls. And the other idea was that the butler was going to be oh, another God. illusion of Harry representing his good side. So his father was the bad side and the butler wasn't real. So that means that when he went, butler, we've got guests, put some food out. He would have spent the rest of the scene going, butler didn't put any food out. You're fired. The blade that pierced his body came from your glider. No, his glider. The blade that pierced his body came from his trailer. 
Another one is a shot of Peter looking cautiously at the box that holds his black suit. The Christopher Yang score is added to more scenes. There's a moment when uh, Sandman visits his daughter and there's a sand castle. And she's I like, forgot oh, the Sandman was in this. Yeah, he's in it, Mason. Yeah, he's right. in the movie. And they cut that very long May Parker scene. It's a no good scene and I'm glad that they cut it. I understand, sure. Uh-huh. Beautiful day. And he said... Let's swim to the island. Shut up! You know how this movie's all about some recycled ideas, including the bit where Mary Jane is, is kidnapped yeah. again or whatever. She's re oh my god, she's kidnapped so many times in this in, yeah. the, in this series. Yeah. What's going on there? Well, apparently they just recycled her screams from part two as well. Incredible. Like, whatever. It's, yeah, right. People aren't going to notice, and we didn't clearly. No, and I imagine there's a you know once you reach a certain level of stardom, there's a there's an element in your contract that just says. She's not going to scream anymore. You don't scream for nobody. Yeah, exactly. You get to the third in a threequel. Oh, don't no, even worry no about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was actually changed during shooting because Bryce Dallas Howard was going to be the one who was kidnapped and Mary Jane goes to Harry and goes, go and save Bryce Dallas Howard and, and help Spider-Man. And he's like, all right, then I will. And Kirsten Dunst, she wasn't happy about that. And Sam Raimi like apologized to her. He's like, I'm so sorry, but this is the way this movie's going. So did Kirsten Dunst want to be kidnapped? No, she did she not want to be say, kidnapped. Yeah. I was going to say, she would. it would surprise me if she kicked the door in one day on the director's office and was yeah. like, what, I'm not getting kidnapped in this one? This is a disgrace. What am I even here for? Mm. You're recycling my screams? Are you kidding me? Aye, there's a fresh one for you. <laughs> that one's for free. The next one will cost you. I like the final battle in the construction site for the yep, most uh -huh. part. I do like the return of New Goblin, though. Who wouldn't? <laughs> it's, your, it's everyone's favourite character, New Goblin. But the, the bomb in the ear. I think that's a good kind of arrival point. For sure, and yeah. It, and it blows out the side of his head and he's like breathing kind of fire and smoke, like uh -huh. coughing it up. Yeah. I think it's quite good. And then he's impaled like his dumb dad. So. Sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've been impaled. Like your dumb dad. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I think the Sandman has a good ending, though. I mean, he does. I mean, he he did brutalise a lot of people. Yeah. He beat up all those cops uh, earlier yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. For his daughter or whatever. Yeah, but I think, sure. You know, Peter comes to the realisation that he's living with hate in his heart. Oh, and he killed his uncle. He killed his uncle. I was <laughs> going to ask you about that retcon. I know, I know you're not really a fan. Did this change anything for you? No, I still hate it. It being the original guy, when Peter gets him, it kind of closes the book on that. Yeah. And then he's doing what he's doing, not out of some sort of vengeance or whatever. He's doing it because it's the right thing to do. Mm. And I feel like leaving the guy out who murdered your uncle... Just out in the world. It's no good. Yeah, fair enough. I did like the moment where he's explaining to him that he's like, look, your uncle said, you know, why don't, why don't you just put the gun down and just walk away? And he's like, look, I realise that, you know, he was just trying to help me or whatever. I thought, I think that's genuinely a good moment. Yeah, for sure. And then he kind of gets his redemption and he, and he blows away in the breeze. The only villain from this series to survive definitively. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So I, I quite like that. Anyway, everyone just cries at each other and then it's the end. Uh, it's, <laughs> look, it's, it's a mixed bag, to be sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, not as bad as I remember it being. Mm. But again, I, I think at the time, expectations were high. Yeah. It was an era where there wasn't going to be another superhero movie the next month. <laughs> yeah, so, sure, yeah. you know, you know, the superhero movies were hitting the mainstream, but you still had to convince people like, no, these, these can be good kind of thing. And yeah. uh, Rise of the Silver Surfer, don't even worry about it. It's, it's going to be, be it's incredible. Massive, they're putting in the Fantastic Car. Yes, so, that's right. Uh, Sam Raimi, though, was deeply unhappy with how this uh, movie turned out. I tried to make it work, but um, didn't really believe in all the characters. And you If you could go back and do it over again, would you do it over again? I wouldn't make that movie. Yeah. And if I had a different story with characters that I cared about, that I thought was engaging and true to the Spider-Man universe, yes in a second. I love Spider-Man, so that was never the issue, just that I made the wrong story in the wrong way. That's, I mean, that's everything. Uh, he hoped to make the fourth film. That, mm. that was the plan, and he was going to make up for it in, in doing that. We talked about the storyboards, how, you know, it was all fleshed out. It was pretty much ready to go, they were talking about as late as like 2011, huh. and he was having meetings with Sony, and they kept going like, are you sure you want to come back? Because, you know, maybe you want to move on, maybe you want to do something else. And he was like, do you want me back? <laughs> and they kind of came to this realisation that, well, he came to the realisation that maybe they didn't and they wanted to, to do the reboot. But yeah, he also said that this movie just raises the stakes, but to what end? Like, because yeah. it doesn't serve the characters. It just kind of goes bigger. And longer. And longer. Yeah. yeah. I want them to make a fourth one, genuinely. Them to give it back to Raimi. Make a movie set within this universe. I mean, who knows where Venom's set? They've got Spider-Verse. They've got the MCU version. They You're did right. the Garfield version. 
I think you could continue this. I think it's been long enough that you could cycle back around to this and I think it would do very well. Tobey Maguire's yeah. back? bring oh. everybody back. Okay. Just do another one. I right. think the same thing with the Keaton Batman. I'm not saying scrap the new Batman. I'm not saying scrap the new yeah, Spider-Man. Right. I'm saying we're in an era now where people understand that there are different superheroes in different yeah, universes. Right. Uh -huh. What if they teased it in uh, Spider-Verse 2 and then ga gauge that popularity? Yeah, I'd take that. Yeah, okay, I'd probably see another yeah. one. So, it, so it'd be set... Now. Yes. Okay, right. Maybe that's a fool's dream, but I think with all this multiverse stuff happening yeah. and, you know, there is call for a live-action Spider-Verse movie, then maybe that's the way what to go. What if it's a YouTube short? No. Like, fuck the, off. The Punisher Dirty Laundry. Actually, I like that one. Yeah, that's the, good, that's right? the only good one. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, this has been Caravan of Garbage for Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. We will come back and do... Spider-Man 4 when it's finally released, <laughs> Absolutely as you just we mentioned. Will. Yeah. yeah. We'll be doing the Andrew Garfield versions probably the next time a Spider-Man movie rolls around. I think I need a bit of a break from these Spider-Man movies for a while would you watch an amazing spider-man 3 no that one i wouldn't what about all the all the stuff in the basement oh yeah there's a lot of shit in that there's basement a lot of, isn't there? there's a lot of backpacks in that basement filled with cool guns and look stuff. i'll take a youtube short where they just go yeah the basement was flooded <laughs> yep <laughs> we lost it all yeah, yeah. uh anyway we do have a service called BigSandwich.co. Though we are taking a bit of a break over January, the content won't stop there, will it, Mason? Never stops. We've over got BigSandwich.co. Exactly. We've got bonus podcasts there. We do a clickbait one. We also do one where we recap a year in pop culture. We That's go, right. oh my We're going to determine which is the definitively the best year of pop culture. Exactly. Since the beginning of time. We've got movie commentaries coming out the wazoo. That's so right. many. We review comic books. Sometimes right. they're the best and you get a good recommendation. Sometimes they're the worst and you should probably read it out of spite. So if you are looking for content, you just you're lost in the wilderness. <laughs> what do right. you do? Where do you go? Maybe you could go here. Got a big sandwich .co. Look, if you've got a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage, bloody, we'll take a look. What do you Absolutely. want to see? And what do you think of the Raimi trilogy in general? Are these good? Do these hold up? Having given them a bit of a breather and coming back, yep. I kind of have a newfound respect for them. Me too. I yeah. was pleasantly surprised. I mm. think if you if you if you realise they're nowhere close to being even set anywhere near the real world, mm. they're they're set in a very comic booky, very stylized at a very specific of, time in yeah, movie history. Very kind of four color superhero comic book world. Mm. I think they were work really well. So. Yeah. I mean, I this one less so. Sure. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know what's up. I know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. We, of course, have our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Mm. I'll link that below if you want to check it out. Thanks, everybody. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And now it's time for us, as we did at the end of every one of these videos, is to sing the pop rock song that was released with this movie. Was there one, really? It, yeah, yeah. It was it, a dashboard confessional again? No, it was probably whatever the fuck Jared Leto's dumb fucking band oh, was. 30 Seconds to Mars. I don't think it was them. But it's probably <laughs> something like, Hope's got you by the webs. <laughs> what are you going to do? Can't escape. Put your fringe down. Sandman, he's here. Oh no, it's Venom too. Is that it? Yeah, that was absolutely it.